Hi everyone, welcome to another session of Training Tips with Ward. In this issue, in this uh, session, what I'd like to discuss is training scent articles, our scent discrimination exercise. And the way I like to do it is by using M&M tubes, as you see here. You can get the small ones, you can get ones that are a little bit bigger, and of course, if you have a dog that's larger, you can make up uh, tubes like so out of a piece of PVC. And in this case, I have a rubber chair protector for the legs of a chair that I've used over top. Now, the reason I like to use these is because it's a technique that the dog finds very, very natural. There's no pressure on the dog. There is no uh, stress that's placed on the dog. It's not uh, as though we sometimes see in dogs learning scent articles and using a tie-down board where the dog comes out and starts randomly picking up different articles and trying to pull on them. Now in that instance, the dog clearly doesn't know what the name of the game is. The name of the game is to find the article with the scent on it, not simply to go out and think it's a retrieve, as many dogs do, and when they start randomly picking up the, uh, the articles from a tie-down board, they become very stressed, and you can see that they suddenly randomly just start picking up different ones. And in that case, the dog really doesn't know the name of the game. The name of the game is really find the scent, not just go out and retrieve a tube or an article. And so the way I teach it to a puppy that's about, oh, let's say 10 weeks old, is by using a tube like this, or one like the smaller one that I showed you a moment ago. In those cases, I take the puppy and I play with them. I put a treat inside the tube, close it off, and then I take and throw it out for the puppy. Like this. Simply throw it out and start pulling it back. Now, usually puppies will go out and play with it, try to see what it is, they're curious. If they're not, why play with it as you would with a dumbbell tied on a string or anything like that. Simply toss it out and pull it back. So let's pretend that the puppy follows it back in and then what you do is simply say, oh, what have I got? What have I got? And pop it open, take the treat out and give it to the puppy. To demonstrate that with Jet, my youngest dog, We'll pretend that he's a puppy, and I'm gonna start playing this game with him. So right now I've got him sitting beside me, as you can see. I'm gonna take and put a treat inside the tube. And I'm going to throw it out and pull it back. I'm not gonna do have Jet do anything at the moment. Stay. So it would be sent out and then pulled back I'd be cheering him on if he was a puppy. And he knows the name of this game, wait. So I pop the lid and give him a treat. Now this time, what I'll do is put the treat in and throw it out. And I'm sure that Jet will go after it. He'll pick it up, he'll bring it back because this is the way he was trained take it. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Here. Come. So what goes out must come back. He didn't bring it back that time, so I simply pulled it back. And now I'm going to say sit. He's having a little bit of difficulty picking it up because of the shape. Come on. Get in. Stay. So let's try that again. 
Stay. Throw it out. Take it. Come here, pup, 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 pup. Yay! Yay! Give! <gasps> what have we got here? What have we got here? All right, let's do that again. Here, Jet. Sit. Put another treat in. Stay. And throw it out. Whoops, let's throw it out again. Another treat in, and let's throw it out. Take it. Come at a boy. What a guy, give. What have we got here? What have we got? Now you can see, close, you can see the effect on the dog. The dog thinks this is just a great game. And that's exactly what I want him to do. So when you bring a brand new puppy home, you of course can teach it the same way to an older dog. But if it's a puppy and you bring him home, and he's about 10 weeks old, you can start playing this right away. And the dog learns very quickly the one, that this is the one that he should get, the one that has your scent on it and also has the scent of the treat that's inside. So let's try one more. Sit. Stay. Take it. Good boy, come. Had a boy. Give. What a guy. So what I have done at some of my seminars, here, is I've taken and given one of these tubes to someone at the end of the first day of the seminar. And I've said, simply go home and take your dog and play with them, throw the treat out in the tube, and make sure it comes back. If a dog already knows how to retrieve, and it's usually very simple, even if the dog doesn't know how to retrieve, they very quickly pick up the idea that if it goes out, it has to come back to you. And even a puppy, a puppy that isn't a, re a retriever or a golden retriever or a lab or any of those dogs, even a puppy that is of a different breed, not a retriever or a sporting dog, usually learns at least within a week or two of playing this game with them that the name of the game is go out, pick up the tube, and bring it back and get your payoff. So the next step in the process is to take your scented tube and place it out in front of the puppy along with a tube that is unscented. So you've got a scented and an unscented tube. In this case, the scented tube is the one that is on my left and the unscented is on the right. You'll notice that I'm working very close to the tubes and you should work very close when you're doing the original stages of learning this exercise. So let's see what happens with them now. Find. Yay! What a guy! You got the right one! Stay. Uh, uh, uh. All right, heel. Good boy. So we'll try that one more time. And in this case, we'll put the scented tube on the right hand side. Find. And good boy. Yay. Yay. Hey, hey. What have we got? So there, that's not even a challenge anymore. He simply went out, and I forgot to put a treat in that there. So now what we're going to do is simply, I'll do that again, put the treat in, stay. So working with two again, find. 
Yes, good boy. So you can see, what have we got, hey? We got something you want, I know. There you go. All right, close. Come on, get in. So, in every case, he brought back the article or the tube that had the treat in it. Now, on this occasion, our next step is going to be to set up with two again and just have my scent on it and whatever residual scent of the treat is in the tube. On the left is the scented one. Find. And you can see how confident he is on that. Stay. So, this time, the treat was brought to me, or the treat is on me, and so I'm going to give him a treat from my treat bag. You. Yeah. So you can see then how this builds from just one tube to two tubes. Well, let's take a big leap and add some additional tubes. Cut. So at this stage, you can still have a treat inside the tube if you wish, or you can simply have the tube out there as I have this time. There's no treat in it. And so his treat is going to come from my bait bag here in front. And I've now got up to four tubes out there. Find. Yes. That's the one. That's the one. Look what I got. Let's do that again. Come on. Hurry up. Get back. Now, stay. As you can see, there's no stress at all on him. He thinks this is a nice game. He hasn't done it for a long time. But we'll try it again. Right on. That was it. That was it. So there we are. We're working with four tubes. Sit. Look what I got. And I'm going to do that again without any treat in the tube. Here. And so you start fading the treat in the tube and uh, simply give him a treat from, if he's got the right tube, give him a treat from your bait bag. Stay. Find. Yes. Give. Good boy. Here it is. We, I usually build up tubes until I have about six tubes that I'm working with and one of them is scented. And I continue that way for a period of maybe one, two, three or more weeks until the dog is confident and relaxed going out and getting them. Then I pull one tube away and I insert in the pile a dumbbell, a dumbbell that is scented. So in this case, I've taken and I've put a metal dumbbell in. The dumbbell is, has my scent on it, and we're going to see whether he goes for the tubes, which is what we've been asking him to do, or whether he goes for the dumbbell. Fine. Good boy. Give. And he brought back the right article that I wanted him to, the metal article. So I would then decrease the number of working with metal. I decrease the number of tubes and insert metal articles in its place. Similarly, heel. Find. Good boy. So there he's working on a leather article. Good boy. Got the right one, I give him a treat. Or with a wooden article, find.
Yes. And he got that right. He was a little curious at first because we have been working with the tubes and uh, he was thinking, well, maybe he's tricking me here. Maybe it's not the article. So he's not going for the article or tube. You can tell, therefore, he's going for the scent. Now, just to make sure and to double check that, let's put a scented tube back and pull the article out. And in, in this case, the scented tube is the one that is closest to the camera on my right hand side. Find. No hesitancy whatsoever. Give. So that tells us that in fact he has learned to associate the one that you want with the scent that's on the tube. Now there's nothing in here. It's my scent on it and perhaps some residual scent from it being used previously. The two terms that I use for our, the, the two terms that I use for the switch around between the tubes and the articles is the big switch, which is the switch from a number of tubes to a single article. Uh, and then the little switch is when we go back down and go from an article or more than one article in the pile and back down to just tubes. Now, if at any time you, your dog is having difficulty, what you should do is remember, work close to the pile, work close. And if necessary, reduce the number of articles or tubes. At the very in the very worst scenario, if you find you're really having trouble, your dog is just going out randomly picking up articles or tubes, go back to two. One scented and one unscented. This gives you the opportunity for the dog to be right at least 50% of the time, even if he's only guessing. And also it gives you the opportunity to praise him when he is correct and the chances are he'll be correct if he only has two articles to select from. So using this technique, you can start off very simply with a tube that you're throwing out, then add an unscented tube side by side, and you can then build up the number of tubes to, as I said, approximately six. Then pick one type of article, either metal, wood, or leather and insert that in the pile in place of a scented tube. Now, the dog may initially experience some difficulty at this point. Don't quit, don't give up, and you'll find that the dog will figure it out fairly quickly. So in summary, this is a very easy exercise for the dog to learn. He finds it fun, and he finds it stimulating. Uh, I would not recommend the tie-down boards because that's stress-inducing, or at least potentially is so. Perhaps not for some dogs, but certainly for others. Uh, you'll see the stress that is associated with using that technique. This stress carries over to the ring, to the competition ring, where you'll see a dog go into the pile and circle and circle and circle and be afraid to pick it up. Why? Because he's been wrong, he hasn't been able to get them when he's been working on the board, and so on. So I highly recommend this approach. Do metal until you have a complete set of metal in the pile then do wood, then do your leather, and then start mixing them up. And finally, of course, you're going to go to a full pile of articles of one type or the other, or a mixture that is a full pile of different articles types. Just remember that when you're working with the piles, the full piles, you, uh, you've reduced the number of tubes correspondingly as you have increased the number of articles. So you're not working with both tubes in the end. You're not working, of course, with both tubes and articles. You're simply working with articles. 
This pretty much explains the way I teach scent articles. It's a very easy, very natural way, and you can start with a very, very young dog. Just out of interest, at one point when I was doing puppy testing for a, a Zoom litter at Lori Weaver's uh, kennel, I tried on an eight-week-old puppy to see if I could take the string on the little ute, on the little tube, throw it out, and if he would, if I could urge him to bring it back. And lo and behold, he did bring it back. Then I because I was interested to see what the response would be, I then took out an unscented tube and placed it beside the other scented tube to see, would this puppy, having only had two or three times in and out with a scented tube with a piece of treat in it, would he pick that one again or would he opt for the, the other one that was unscented? And lo and behold, he went for the one that had the treat in it that had my scent on it. It was a very interesting little experiment. <laughs> well, that pretty much winds it up for scenting. <clears throat> From my perspective, I hope you've enjoyed it. And remember, have fun training your dog.